thanks for all your help. Oh yeah. Uh, well, thanks to you. And, and I mean, honestly, uh, you know, it would have been nice to add, uh, to put more resources to it and have more cycles on it, but, uh, just a timing issue. I, I wasn't, I honestly was not planning to go to the hymns conference, uh, this time around, but, uh, it, it, that was more of a priority, unfortunately. So, but, um, anyway, uh, I, I think That's this, why I was team just in time. Team yeah, just yeah. In time. <laughs> yeah. But uh, as, as I as sort of mentioned to you, uh, I had a good conversation with our CMO, and I think going forward, uh, she's very, very interested in this, and I think uh, you know there may be some value in this uh, longer term. So I think this is a great start. Cool. All right. Well, we're just now at the top of the hour. Um, I see some folks uh, just now getting on the line. So good morning, uh, good afternoon, or good evening to you, depending on where you are. Um, let's uh, let's get let's get started. Um, I, I, my suspicion is, yeah, we're, we're just watching. I'm just now seeing folks dialing in, but we'll we'll get started uh, since it is the top of the hour. So hello all, and you should see. Good morning, Rich. Good good morning. How are you? Yeah, how are you? Good, good. How are you, Ravish? Um, Hi, Rich. So, good morning. I'm good morning. On my voice. Uh, I'm still not. Uh, I'm still recovering. So. Okay. All right. All right. Well, s save save your voice, but good good to have you on the line. Um, so everyone should see in front of them. I, I'm sharing our uh, our agenda for for the morning. Uh, I, I am I'm up at our our my home office and. Uh, out here, I live out in the sticks uh, in, in north of the Seattle area here, and we had some snow uh, again, uh, uh, and my bonded DSL is no longer bonded, so I'm, I'm only about half speed here. So if we run into problems, I'm gonna blame that. Uh, the, the weather has seems to have taken a toll, and I gotta do some troubleshooting, it looks like, later today. But anyway, if I happen to drop off the line, that's the, that's the reasoning. So anyway, so you should see the agenda in front of you. Uh, and the first thing that we always like to do is uh, direct your attention to our antitrust policy. Uh, please review that here. Uh, and that's always available for anyone that wants to sort of peruse it. But the upshot is uh, be a good person. Uh, and so that's what this is all about. Um, and I'll ask if someone would like to volunteer to take notes for today. Nobody. Oh, man. And I think, Alan, you took notes for us last week, so thank you for that. All right. So Hi, this is Wendy. I'll volunteer. I'll be happy. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, Wendy, you win, Wendy. It's Women's Day. So okay. Off, off. <laughs> that thank sounds you. good. I'm happy to help. Uh, thank you, Wendy. <laughs> Um, just if you can, if you might, uh, just uh, sort of walk through, take notes at a sort of a high level, um, and that'll just help me sort of help facilitate. And then please email me uh, your notes after the meeting. That's that's really the extent of, the, of that. And then I incorporate that into uh, our agenda. That becomes our, our notes and, and point of reference going forward for people that couldn't make the meeting. So thank you, Wendy. Um, and on that note, uh, we do, it looks like, I think we have some newer folks on the call. So if you're, if you're relatively new or brand new to the call, please uh, sort of raise your hand and, and, and introduce yourself. Uh, we'd, love to, we'd love to hear from you. So this, this is, is uh, Jim Mason. I've been here a couple of times. Um, I'm really somebody who's sort of out of place. I'm not working in healthcare at the moment. I'm actually in automotive, but when I did a comparison with somebody else, on healthcare and automotive, we had about, oh, 92% overlap on the same, I'll call it low level design issues that we have to deal with and blockchain. So I found a lot of value in focusing on um, the healthcare special interest group. Yeah, uh, good, good morning, Jim. Yeah, I, I think I recall you, uh, you from an earlier call. And then um, did you ever connect with Stephen uh, by any chance? Um, only via email. Uh, Steve and Elliot and I have- uh, Yeah. We, an email and that's really where the focus is and I think he may be slightly ahead I'm not sure where his development is but we're both actually actually actively working on development now and it is somewhat similar in a sense on what we're working with we're both trying to use current versions of uh, fabric as well okay excellent excellent yeah I see Stephen on the call and so yeah I, I do remember the conversation and uh, I'm great to have you on as a resource uh, honestly 
uh, where many of us are, it really doesn't matter the domain so much. Uh, we're still all still uh, pretty much learning uh, uh, blockchain technologies. Uh, and in fact, uh, our survey results for this year are, 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 are out. And so I'll be touching on that a little bit as well uh, later in the call. So, but thanks, thanks to have you on, on, the, on the call this morning again. Uh, and Jonathan, uh, can you introduce yourself, please? Yeah, so I'm Jonathan Holt. So I'm a clinical geneticist by training, uh, but my background mostly is in bioinformatics. Um, so I'm involved in a couple of different other groups. I've been actually been involved in this group before, back about two years ago when it was first formed. Um, a lot of my focus is in identity. Uh, so I do cryptographic identity for verification of credentialing. Uh, it's one uh, specific use case. I'm the chair of the IEEE Identity and Healthcare Working Group. And i um, an advisor to half a dozen companies. Oh, outstanding. And do you happen to know Vipin from, from the yeah, identity? I do. I do Excellent. Well. Oh, great, great, great. Great to have you. Uh, and uh, wh where are you located physically? Uh, so I have offices in Nashville and Chicago, but most of my team is uh, distributed. Oh, outstanding. Uh, I'm, I'm from Chicago originally, so great to have you from the Midwest. Um, and great to have you on the call. Uh, are, are you planning to sort of s stick around? It'd, it'd be great to maybe get you uh, involved in uh, some of our subgroups. Um, yeah, I think it's just, a, you know, it's, uh, I've been lurking on this call and the identity call. And I think um, okay. there are some specific applications um, and a crossover for interoperability that we're focused on right now. Um, and so, certainly uh, the cursor library coming from the Hyperledger and uh, intersection with the verification of claims in, in healthcare has suddenly reached maturity. Right, right. Oh, good, good. So, uh, so keep your ears sort of posted as we get down to our interoperability subgroup, because I'm sure Stephen uh, will, will be thrilled to have you uh, join, join in on that when Stephen gives us an update. Um, anyone else on, on the call uh, that's new or, or you just want to introduce yourself? Okay. Rich, just, uh, sorry, just to let you know that Logan who could not make it this morning and he says hi. Okay, hey, thank you, Bilal. <laughs> so, <laughs> suspiciously, Logan had a paper due. <laughs> and, oh, and so I now, don't know about that. <laughs> I, I, I'm on to him, but uh, we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll grill him formally as we get down in the agenda. But thanks, Bilal. Thank you very much. And he's based in Chicago, by the way. So Yes, uh, uh, actually, it's interesting. Yeah, yeah he, I, know, I know where he lives. Uh, my family is from very, very, within just a few miles of where he lives. And so I, I'm very familiar with his his uh his area uh okay all right well <laughs> thanks for that Bilal. all right well uh anyone uh care to make a community announcement uh, uh share a little bit about the work that you're doing specifically uh with uh the hyperledger framework uh that that you want to just share openly with with the community here and and always uh, feel free to use our list listserv as a way to maybe communicate some ideas or thoughts or, or share some uh, some new company announcements. Uh, that's what it's there for. The whole purpose of uh, of this community is really for uh, for sharing your knowledge uh, with others uh, in this space. Uh, just as an FYI for those of you that are fairly new, uh, we have over a thousand members uh, in the in the healthcare profession. Uh, that are part of this uh, special interest group, and uh, they range, you know, literally all over the world. So we have a lot of folks here in the U.S., uh, Canada, India, uh, England, or U.K., and and Germany periodically. And so uh, it's a it's a pretty pretty wide ranging group of folks. Uh, and in fact, uh, we just had an email circulate. Uh, I want to say last night from South America, from I think in Argentina. So lots of interesting folks. Okay. Hey Rich, this is Ravish. I just wanted to share. I know I've um, I promised you that I'll send out uh, the email to the sick group, but I have not had a chance. I've just fallen sick since uh, it's been two weeks now. So um, I, I wanted to share with the group that the work that my team has been doing. Um, we we've rolled out. A, a, we have a low code no code platform, and there is a plugin that we created for Hyperledger, so you can visually create applications and prototypes and really start uh, building an application even though you may not know how to code or how to you know uh, 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 directly work with Hyperledger but if you are able to just follow our blog you can literally start creating business applications on blockchain visually 
you don't have to know no coding so i just wanted to put this out there i will send out a, a email with all the information but i have not had a chance to to do that yet thanks thanks for that revish and, and i just saw your your chat uh, that you're going to have to drop off the call in about 10 minutes or so uh, do you want to mention the name of your company the group that you're working with yeah the the company name is joget j o g e t and i will send out some information and and the articles that we have published so that will help um, you know the um, any of the blockchain enthusiasts uh, even if they don't know uh, you know how to code if you have a business problem the real 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 issue in in blockchain is uh, not just the blockchain the business aspect of how to present the problem and how to model the problem um and and i think just building out an application really helps understand the business problems also easily so anyone who is not even familiar with with you know coding can still create drag and drop and visivic kind of things to to create a blockchain application excellent outstanding yeah uh, thanks for that revision yeah uh, that'd be great if you want to uh, shoot out an email to describe a little bit more about what you, what you've been doing with the plugin um, and, and while we have you, Ravish, uh, let's, you want to give us an update on the payer subgroup? We'll just sort of segue into that and then come back around to the payer subgroup. Yeah, I can quickly do that. So um, in the payer subgroup, we, uh, we have been talking about gathering some information around uh, what we should be doing this year. So just collecting the interest uh, from various um, you know, perspectives. And also, um, there is a detailed survey that went out um, that Web have sent across to capture uh, the next level of details. Your the, your area of interest is is this in this area. What exactly you want to do? So um, I am about to just put together the meeting minutes uh, from this week and send out, and those links will go out in that. Excellent. And uh, so uh, remind us of the status of the uh, the paper that that you had been working on. Has that come to are, are you sort of done with that? We have not, uh, you know, gotten back to that yet, uh, Rich. But uh, you know, one of the one of the items from survey uh, tells us that we should still go ahead and finish that paper. So I know we will be getting back on track with that paper as well. Okay, excellent. And and the, and you want to describe very briefly the 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 content of that uh, white paper that you guys have been working on? Sure, sure. So um, I think there is a big challenge from blockchain perspective to come up with a decision as to what problem should we apply blockchain to. So since we are working on a pair subgroup, uh, we are putting together a decision framework for you know that pairs can be uh, uh, can be can leverage to come up with the decision on. You know, is this problem good fit for a blockchain technology or not? And what are the considerations when you do that? Excellent. Uh, that's the white paper that we are working on. And 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 is it really is it really scoped to the payer space or not necessarily? The uh, the idea is, uh, Rich, we are initially trying to keep it general, and there will be an addendum for payers. Um, idea is going to be, um, you know, to make it. Um, all the all these blockchain decision frameworks are specific to our industry, and we don't want to do that. We just want to lay down that these are the key uh, decision points, and here is the pair perspective on on these decision points. So you know it kind of uh, gives us dual benefit uh, from paper standpoint. Okay, excellent. All right, thanks so much for that, Ravish. Uh, so I'll circle back up to the to the patient subgroup. Uh, I don't see Ben on the call, uh, but I but Ben and I have been working. So for those of you that are familiar, so the patient subgroup uh, is probably one of our uh, oldest subgroups. Uh, and the most recent project uh, we've been working on is something called the Donor Milk Project. Uh, that's been going on for not quite a year. I'd say maybe three quarters of a year or so, uh, more or less. And uh, we lost our customer a few months ago, and so we're in the process now of identifying a new customer, um, or what I would call, from an engineering perspective, a subject matter expert, or SME. Uh, and so I know Ben has been working on uh, identifying uh, contacts uh, to identify a new SME for that donor milk project. And then for those of you on the listserv, you may have seen an email just circulate uh, again last night from, uh, oh gosh, now I forget the name of the company. A uh, gentleman from a company down uh, in South America who has an interest in helping out uh, in that space as well. So uh, I know uh, Ben had to cancel their uh, their their biweekly meeting, uh, which is every other week opposite this week, 
uh, Fridays, I think at nine Pacific instead of seven. Uh, and so I, my suspicion is they'll be back online uh, next week. So again, opposite this week. Um, so anyone who's interested, uh, the, the, the real focus of the patient subgroup is to, is to use the patient as sort of the, the central focus for hyperledger solutions. Uh, the way that they've been doing it in the past is, tends to be more top-down, which is looking at uh, sort of the application layer and developing applications uh, in concert with uh, customers uh, in the real world. Uh, and again, uh, their donor milk project is a good example of that. Um, so, uh, so that's the patient subgroup. And then I'll, sa I'll sort of hand this over to Stephen uh, for an update on the work that he's been doing with spinning up the new, this is our brand new healthcare interoperability subgroup. Uh, Stephen, you want to talk a little bit about that? <laughs> well, it's kind of in the same place that it was uh, two weeks ago when we <clears throat> had another had the other meeting. Um, I'm still in the uh, stages now of putting together a a charter, which is really uh, an elaborated mission statement that will help us uh, identify and define the uh, the the goals and how to get there. Um, so it's quite different than some of the other subgroups. Uh, it's sort of a bottom-up approach. We're going to make a lot of assumptions, uh, probably about things like identity, so that we can drill down and, and see if we can not execute and place uh, clinical artifacts on a blockchain and to do that in an interoperable way. And by that, I mean something that can be, uh, that's meaningful to at least two or three different health systems on the same channel, as well as the patient. And begin to iterate around that and develop uh, a sort of a, a service-oriented architecture that can be plugged into maybe other clinical blockchains that might need to put uh, clinical artifacts uh, on the blockchain. So hopefully I'll be able to finish that up this weekend. I'm, I'm, a, little, I'm a little behind because of my day job. Um, we're, <laughs> under, <clears throat> we're under a lot of pressure right now to get uh, transition, uh, some, uh, s some architecture from uh, one cloud structure to another cloud structure, and I'm the technical lead on that. So it's we have a transition date of April 20th, so one way or the other, I'll have to be finished by that. In the meantime, though, I would like to get at least one meeting sometime, uh, maybe later this month. Uh, I have people's uh, names, like Jim, who uh, we've talked a couple of times, and yes, this is very, the kinds of things that he's, he's dealing with in the automobile industry uh, overlap quite a bit with what we're doing here. So again, I think that driving through actual building code in a, in a blockchain and the policies and the assets and the transactions and all of those good things, I think will teach us a lot about what kinds of things we need, such as identity in order to, in order to make everything work. <clears throat> so we're gonna be using use cases. Um, first one is going to be uh, an immunization flu shot um, in a walk-in clinic and how that surfaced in the primary care physicians office and to the patient itself. So even, even something very simple like that becomes very complex when you start taking into account all of the kinds of things that you need to persist uh, and how to do it in an interoperable way. So like I said, hopefully I'll be able to give Rich a, a first draft. Well, we already have a first draft actually. This has been, this is a this is a subgroup that's been transitioned from the EMR. Well, actually not transitioned, but began because the EMR subgroup. Uh, yeah, so right. Yeah, there, there's, a, sort of, there's, a, there's a loose tie there. <laughs> yeah, a loose tie in the sense that um, we're, we're, we're taking a much finer slice of things. Uh, the conversation began with that group, matured with that group. So we do have some solid ideas. It's just a matter of getting the documentation together, submitting that. And, and then getting started. And I hope that yeah. you know, we'll get a lot of different people, uh, people that can code, people that are clinicians, uh, informaticists uh, that can help us identify ways to represent uh, the knowledge in an interoperable way, probably using something like FHIR, 
um, but also standard terminologies like SNOMED, uh, MOINC, and RX norm. So anyway, this is uh, part of the conversation that will be developing around the, the, the group, uh, and certainly be some of the first conversations as we decide on, okay, what do, where do we want to stick the pole in the ground and, and, and drive forward with? Yeah, I mean, this, this is really ex uh, exciting, Stephen, because uh, this is really, uh, uh, this has been a, a long discussion uh, at, at sort of a high level to understand how do we do a bottom-up solution, which tends to be more service-based rather than customer-facing necessarily, because uh, it's really an abstraction. And the, the hope is to be able to sort of reuse this in, in slightly different contexts, but but making this more service-oriented. Uh, and that that to me is very powerful. Uh, and, and to the point that you made earlier, I, I do believe we have uh, uh, quite a number of interested folks and so uh, that are in fact uh, one of our earlier sort of designers uh, Sonia uh, I think uh, just recently contacted us and so we definitely have the resource uh, online and it's just now a question of yeah just for you to find the time uh, maybe to, to, to kick off that that sort of first meeting to, to bring people together so yeah this is this is very exciting and, and it sounds like Jonathan uh, may also have value uh, to, to add to that as well so uh, Jonathan, feel free to contact Stephen or vice versa, because I imagine uh, this will this will be a very very interesting subgroup going forward. Uh, Stephen, any other comments? Yep, and that's actually the same uh, use case. But... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Right. Oh, well, good, no, glad, no. good to hear that, Stephen. Jonathan. Yeah. So that's the same use case that we're actually driving in the IEEE uh, for interoperability and working with collaborative partners, one in the UK. And that really centered around identity um, and the cryptographic um, claims of the credentialing of the vaccination record. And this is really very much of the idea of the patient at the, being at the, the center of this because you get your care anywhere and it's very much decentralized by nature. And so I think the, the output of the IEEE subgroup for identity is going to be a working um, <coughs> code, uh, I'm sorry, working framework for not only just the fire, but also uh, the, the, the semantic interoperability. So how do we represent vaccination records? How do we represent the credentialing of providers and, and the unique identity of the individual at the center of that? So I imagine there's some certain cross-pollination and my goal in uh, the IEEE uh, working group is to not just produce a document because that seems like whenever you have a uh, you talk about standards, you talk about standards bodies, and the standards body actually wants to produce a document. I really hope to have a, a standalone uh, document that actually can have some merits that can cross-pollinate to other working groups, including here in uh, Hyperledger, that we actually get attestations and support from uh, for the merits, not it coming out of one specific work group. So right, Jonathan, right. Just, a quick, just a quick question. Are you using a permissioned uh, blockchain? Like fabric? Uh, no blockchains. So it's actually blockchains are, we're agnostic to specific uh -huh. blockchains. We, uh -huh. uh, the, the goal really would be to anchor the truth, leveraging blockchain technologies or the distributed ledger technologies. But ultimately, it's about the cryptographic primitives of the attestations. Outstanding. Yeah. So, so it, what it sounds like to me is an abstraction on top of, uh, on top of any blockchain technology uh, as needed. Correct. Excellent. Well, very good. Jonathan, in your area on, um, I'll call it uh, proofs, if you will, on patient data and um, verification and that kind of stuff, there's an excellent um, paper on interoperability, um, you know, proofs uh, for blockchain stuff that might have some relevance uh, from MIT. I'll get you a link for that and post it in the chat here. Excellent. Thank you, Jim. Okay, uh, well, good conversation. Uh, let's move on. Um, so we have, uh, in addition to our subgroups, we also have ad hoc teams and really the difference between a subgroup and an ad hoc. Uh, ad hoc teams really tend to be focused on a very specific item uh, or elements uh, that tend to be more time-based. Uh, so we are, as most of you may know, we, we originally uh, lived on DocuWiki, uh, which is where our wiki space is and we've recently, uh, earlier this year, moved over uh, to Confluence, which is what you're looking at right now. Uh, and um, we're still in process trying to transition everything from sort of uh, 
from our Docu DocuWiki space over here. And so things still tend to be a little bit, little bit cluttered. Uh, we've got a lot of broken links and so forth. Uh, and that's just part of the transition process. Uh, Ravish has been working uh, with his team on, on that activity. Uh, and as well, um, the other sort of key element here is we want to be able to synchronize with the other special interest groups within the hyperledger community here as well. And so uh, he's doing some work with uh, the other uh, SIGs to make sure that uh, we're, we're sort of consistent in our presentation of information so that so that any member of any SIG can sort of move back and forth between the SIGs with, with relative ease without having to sort of relearn the system. Um, and, and so that's gonna be a longer term project, but uh, just sort of an FYI, and I know Ravish was on the call earlier, uh, that continues uh, pretty well. Um, okay, and this is, so this is the academic research team that, uh, that Bilal had, had made reference to. Uh, so uh, I've been working uh, with uh, both Adrian and more, more recently Logan on uh, this uh, academic research project. Uh, I'll just sort of move us over to that. So this is the paper that we put together uh, several months ago. The purpose of which really is to sort of find a way to, uh, to speak to some of the deficiencies that we have within the uh, blockchain community in healthcare as it relates to academic uh, peer-reviewed resources. Uh, as most people probably uh, know, in healthcare, uh, it tends to be very, very much wedded uh, to academia. And so the process for vetting anything, including new technologies, tends to be a very sort of uh, kind of linear sort of staid process where peer-reviewed uh, articles uh, are very, very important. Uh, and so, uh, so what this uh, team is, is working on is sort of a, trying to message a way for, uh, for this special interest group uh, through this research team uh, to develop a, uh, uh, sort of a, a playing, uh, um, sort of a, a way forward, um, a, a strategy uh, to engage some some companies that uh, that tend to be agnostic, uh, platform agnostic, uh, particularly RTI, of which I think Adrian is a part of that organization, uh, and and we're really looking for resources to help out in this this respect. So the takeaway then, uh, the deliverable for this research team would be a white paper that gets published to say, hey, look, we need to find a way to sort of formalize uh, the activity of developing uh, sort of. Uh, uh, framework agnostic blockchain technology solutions in the healthcare space that are peer reviewed. So that's kind of the upshot. So it's, it's a, again, this tends to be uh, probably something of a longer term process, but uh, it's, it's really interesting. And of course, if you have an interest in this particular space, feel free to contribute as well. Uh, contact either myself or Logan or Adrian. Uh, Adrian's leading that, uh, although I know he sort of fades in and out because um, I know what his workload looks like. Uh, he's down in uh, Southern California, I think, RTI, um, and that's uh, that's the work effort there. Um, hey, Rich. This is yeah. Wendy. Yes, Wendy. I totally want to contribute to that group. So, oh, outstanding. Um, oh, yeah, very cool. So please let me know how I can help. Oh, very cool. Uh, so I will put you in touch with Logan and Adrian. Uh, we were joking earlier, Logan, uh, when Adrian, Adrian, Logan, and I met last month, Logan was going to put together sort of a, a one-page summary for what, what he thought uh, a strategy for going forward would be, and it hasn't materialized yet, and so <laughs> we were joking that Logan wasn't going to be on the call today, because he knows, he knows. So I will uh, harass him for you, Rich. Thank you, worry. Bilal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So... Um, Anyway, so thank you, Wendy. I'll, I'll make your introductions. Uh, if you can uh, contact me, uh, probably through Rocket Chat, that might be easiest, Wendy, and just okay. uh, send me your email if I don't have, I, I may have it, but send it to me anyway. Yeah, I think we had even corresponded about yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, I think so, so too. So, okay. so we'll, we'll make sure that awesome. you get connected. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, and then that way, uh, not only will I be able to kick Logan but, and Bilal, but now we can have Wendy do that. So that'll be awesome. Oh, that's great. And I have an enormous personal library of academic research on blockchain. So, um, and I am familiar with the slow speed of publishing and yeah. getting work out <laughs> into the academic space. So I am more than happy to contribute to your efforts. Oh, thank you. So, so on a, on a personal note, I, I wrote a, a paper, uh, an article, uh, a couple of, oh boy, now it's been a couple months. And uh, my editor has been sort of shopping this thing around and it's just been very hard to do. So 
maybe we can talk a little bit offline about where we may have missed. Uh, I think she was working with HBR and I don't know what happened after that. So we'll have to sort of figure out what to do with it. Uh, yeah. But thank you, thank you for that, Wendy. Appreciate it. Oh, that sounds good. And um, since I have a degree, I don't know if people need to have degrees or academic backgrounds, but I could, we could certainly use my academic background <laughs> degree to put ourselves out there. So, Oh, outstanding. Yeah. Uh, you know, and actually as, as a reminder, um, Oh, and actually it's the next sort of the next thing down. Uh, yeah. So for people that are interested in getting published uh, and, and really this, uh, I, I think I described this last time, um, uh, let me click on this. So, so we'll sort of do a segue and keep Wendy sort of, we'll keep you in the loop on this. So, uh, so this was really uh, just a personal thing. Uh, the upshot is we have uh, over a thousand folks here that uh, have expertise in the healthcare space. And it only occurred to me after I had written my paper um, that it's like, gee, I should, I should have opened this up to the whole of membership and asked who, who would want, want to be able to, uh, to contribute on this paper. So in hindsight, uh, that's what this page is about. Really, if anyone is interested in writing a paper or collaborating on a paper, we're basically crowdsourcing this for any, anyone in HC SIG membership who has an interest in participating in paper writing. And that's really what this table is about. Anyone can edit this, uh, feel free to do so. And, and the upshot of it is you wanna be able to just sort of put in just a working title just to get, gain someone's interest. Uh, talk about maybe a, a brief th thesis, uh, you know, the point of the paper, uh, the, if whether you're an owner or if you see someone else that's an owner of the paper, add yourself as a collaborator. Uh, and then that way, like I said, we can crowdsource this and, and put multiple folks together uh, collaborati uh, co collaboratively on a paper, sort of all under the sort of the, the auspices of, of Hyperledger. Or, and certainly you don't have to do it through Hyperledger, but this is kind of the mechanism we're using here. Uh, and in that way, uh, you're really able to take advantage of the over the 1,000 folks that are internationally located who, uh, who I'm certain have much greater expertise than I do individually uh, on any particular topic. And so that's what this is all about. So, you know, Wendy, to your point, yeah, that's, that's fantastic that, that you're right there, you're a resource available to, to anyone. So. Uh, so yeah, so absolutely. I'm, I'm absolutely excited. I, I'd love to see this thing move forward uh, to the extent that we can make it happen. Well, yeah, and I, I'm so glad that you are pushing this because uh, it's been really slow to get peer-reviewed articles. Mo most of the articles coming out about blockchain are coming out of published conference proceedings. Very few are coming out of um, peer-reviewed generally well accepted academic publications. And the concern that I have is that most of the publications that are coming out aren't particularly useful. They're just regurgitating use cases. Yeah. Um, there is a tremendous need in to get good information out there to uh, the academic community that will be value added and useful to advancing not just educating, but really advancing blockchain. And, and so, yes, I'm right. here to help. So, so one of the issues that we run into, and I'm sure most people on the call understand this as well, is that uh, in, in the healthcare space, uh, to, to have a conversation with uh, the, you know, an IT department in a fairly large healthcare system, uh, you really have to make a fairly good case uh, to see, to, 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 for folks to understand the value of blockchain technologies. Uh, and to be honest, you know, uh, blockchain is not a panacea. I think we've come to realize this at this point. Uh, as sort of time moves on, we, we've got, certainly gotten a lot more mature in our understanding of where the use cases are and are not for blockchain. In fact, I just, I think I read, uh, I think it was yesterday up on Medium, there's a really good article about, you know, a uh, comparison of, of blockchain technologies versus traditional databases. So, um, so what happens is, you need to find a way to demonstrate value for what the technology can and cannot do and be very, very objective about it. Uh, and, and to your point, Wendy, you know, a lot of the stuff that comes out tends to be biased one way or the other. So if a framework, XYZ framework comes out, they, they'll publish results that suggest that their, their framework tends to be better, faster, stronger, longer, whatever it may be uh, compared to other frameworks, but uh, it's really not, 
valued because because um, there's there's bias introduced and again healthcare tends to be very academically wedded and in academia you have very very rigorous uh, processes in place for managing objectivity uh, and so then of course that's the value of a peer-reviewed system so uh, well uh, that's at least in theory anyway um, but yeah so so that's the problem that we're faced with and so we're trying to we're trying to uh, sort of accelerate a solution in that in that space so that we have a resource available uh, and again within the context of the hyperledger community uh, we can say hey look uh, here's where uh, for example fabric tends to do very well but maybe rolls off at scale uh, soft tooth for example tends tends to scale better uh, at, at a higher end for uh, a transaction per second and and here's where that sort of sweet spot happens to be and do it in a way that's very objective to the extent possible. Uh, and that's why, you know, part of the conversation uh, with uh, the, the current team that we have for the academic research folks is where we're, we're engaging organizations that are willing to participate sort of from an objective uh, point of view where they, where they can do so. So yeah, um, so, so this is a big issue. Yeah. So, Rich, uh, just to comment on that, a couple of things. One, um, I'm actually, the company I work with, DMX, has created something called DMX University, which is, un, I'll call it irrelevant to the entire 90% of the planet because we're only focusing this thing on Puerto Rico as a way to help, I'll call it, um, move the economy forward by moving people into tech roles in that specific area. So our charter is limited to Puerto Rico and Puerto Rican residents only, but um, we created a university that is launching April one that's really going to be targeted on certifying hyperledger fabric developers period. And we've oh, got a whole yeah. curriculum underneath that. Yeah. So okay. there's a whole curriculum. And, and what we did is we stole parts from other places. So we didn't say, let's build the whole thing from scratch. The two basic things we did is we pulled in a bunch of what I call, uh, you know, background blockchain stuff on you from you to me and that kind of thing and said, we'll give those away free. The whole program's free. Nobody gets charged anything who's in the program, but, um, what we're doing is we built the fabric piece on top of the current version of fabric documentation. And I've just been going through with some other people creating exams on that. So we're building, I'll call it certification on the latest version of fabric. So there's tons of fabric courses out there and even blockchain courses, but none of them are, I'll call it current on the current version of fabric. So at least we're getting to that point. Um, and as part of that effort, to your point, going back to the white paper stuff, there's a ton of stuff I have on, you know, I'll call it current fabric features and terminology that we've just dug through mm -hmm. as concepts that could easily kick into that. The other thought, going back to um, rolling out blockchain successfully in any environment, not just healthcare, but the two things that stick out like a sore thumb is we have a methodology that seems to work pretty well at DMX. And what it is, is we don't start out with the idea that blockchain's part of a solution. We start out with the idea in a conversation that says, Rich, the methodology is you tell me what the best solution is to the problem you're looking at, and then we'll see if uh, the methodology says, okay, let's ask if blockchain adds value. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but, so we're not assuming blockchain belongs in there. We don't. The other thing that's very different, and um, I haven't published anything on it, but will, is we're targeting the idea when we compare the traditional system and the methodology to a blockchain system, we're not doing your existing system or new system to blockchain. We're doing it specifically to enterprise blockchain and fabric, which is radically different in features. And it changes the equation quite a bit. And there's no literature, there's nothing being done in academia for the most part. There are specific projects around testing pieces of fabric in academia for sure. One of which was the one that has the fast fabric model. Now that's, you know, when they probably implement that will boost fabric performance on the TPS side by 500%, you know, probably next year. Um, right, right. That was out of uh, University of Waterloo, I think. Yeah. Yes, it was in Ottawa. And so that's a sort of a no brainer that will show up. I, I'm not going to make claims on when, you know, that rewrite of the ordering service will happen, but the fact that you can get to, you know, call it a 500 TPS, 500% uh, TPS gain, on the right side is an enormous change in where fabric applies. But the bigger thing is that fabric is an enterprise blockchain has radically different characteristics uh, for use cases than traditional blockchain. And 99% of literature is around generic blockchain or Ethereum uh, or Ethereum forks and nothing to do with fabric enterprise 
uh, features that are significantly different in tailoring to use cases. So if you're actually looking at fabric and you're saying, here's a healthcare thing, I'd argue that there's really not a methodology out there yet that any that I've read anywhere that comes close to getting that right for what it's worth as an approach. Yeah, that's a really good observation, Jim. I, I would agree with you on that. Uh, again, the formalities, uh, you know, the rigor just isn't there yet. Uh, and that's partly because this is a fairly na uh, nascent uh, technology space and everyone's sort of still scrambling to understand it and to sort of quantify it, qualify it. Um, uh, you know, uh, it, it'd be it'd be great, Jim, if, if perhaps maybe you can send uh, information out to the listserv to membership uh, a little bit about what uh, I think it was DMX is doing in this space, because uh, I, I would imagine there are going to be folks in membership that would be interested in uh, sort of going down that path of education uh, and, and you know, I, it sounds yeah. like eventual certification. Well, so what's happening is the program, the way we're running the program is quote free no charge number one but two it's limited to puerto rican residents only and that's oh, the, okay all right but that's the long-term mission of that so what i'm arguing back to the president of um dmx is hey look um why don't we run the thing for a couple of months and if the program in a sense produces or meets the goals it's supposed to my argument is since there isn't any good um comprehensive fabric developer um training program out there but the content's good from the development from the uh, fabric documentation team why don't we in a sense just open source back to the hyperledger fabric project um our in a sense training uh, it's really uh, call it organized workflow on top of what their content is uh, including exams and all that stuff and we should just open source that back so that's a proposal i have to the president if that works then you're right at some point six months out we'll just donate the stuff to and make it available um you know to everybody free okay yeah okay i understand now okay yeah yeah definitely keep keep us posted on that because again uh there i i imagine there's good good value there so uh, so thanks for that um okay yeah, sure. uh again great conversation uh thanks uh jim and wendy as well uh for for contributing to that that this is again this is a kind of an exciting area where there's awful lot of potential growth happening. Um, let's see, so uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about, uh, we, uh, we recently closed out on a Kidney X redesign uh, competition. Um, Alan, did you wanna talk a little bit about that since uh, really Aetna CVS did, did the heavy lifting for this? Well, you're, you're being modest. Um, um, you know, Rich you know, has a lot of passion around uh, you know, kidney, um, you know, as a transplantee and, uh, you know, he's active in the communities and he you know, keeps current on the, the technology. Um, I, I love blockchain and any opportunity to um, learn about how we could use the technology for good is uh, good with me. Um, I've explored, you know, Ethereum, blockchain, um, all sorts of stuff, um, trying to figure out some patterns that, you um, can be scaled for enterprise use. So I don't know if you're going to pull it up or yeah. Um, I, I just essentially just, the the problem that we were trying to do is thanks. Yep. So the problem that we were trying to do in this um, challenge is make a better experience for the patient. And um, you know, unfortunately, there's a lot of paper. There's a lot of uh, manual processes. There's data aggregation. Um, uh, the delays or the little red walls there that I have <laughs> cause, uh, you know, quality of care issues, uh, treatment, uh, uh, whether it's uh, physical or mental, uh, there's all sorts of delays. So the thought process here is, A, uh, blockchain could allow the patient to own their records, uh, you know, understand when their data is getting shared, how much of their data they are willing to share, um, and then make sure that their support groups, whether it's you know family members, nurses, you name it, um, are in the loop, right? They're getting the right information. Um, a lot of the times people are not in the best cognitive state. They can't remember things. They're not feeling good. Um, so why should we have to make them go through, you know, a heavy technical debt cycle uh, to get the best care, right? Let's make it easier for them to get the best care. 
Um, and, and that's, I think, a summary. Rich, is there anything I missed on that? <laughs> no, that's that's really good. I mean, the, the, the upshot is uh, kidney care, uh, particularly because it's managed through uh, CMS, uh, is one of those sort of rare uh, sort of population health issues or chronic disease states, uh, however you want to look at it, where uh, it is managed through the government in a, in a very formal way. Uh, dialysis, dialysis particularly, uh, it impacts uh, just about 10% of the, the population. Uh, I think it's one in seven, so it's about 13% of the population. Uh, it's one of these diseases that tends to be very quiet. You don't know about it until uh, almost too late. So I'll just, I'll just be public and say, make sure you, you track your blood pressure and make sure that you keep your protein in urine and blood to uh, normal levels. And if you don't get that checked regularly, please do. So that's my sort of PSA. Um, but the, the upshot on that is, yeah, uh, it, you know, we're still uh, working in the dark ages when it comes to the technologies that, that, that sort of uh, circulate behind dialysis, uh, either in center, which is where you go to a, a facility that, that uh, is built, uh, purpose built for uh, dialysis and a dialysis patient will have to go a uh, minimum of three times a week or the home modality where you actually get to dialyze at home uh, between three to five times a week, which is something that I did when I was on dialysis. Um, and in, in both instances, particularly home dialysis, uh, it is non-optimal. Uh, the paperwork is, is pretty significant. And the reason for that is really policy drives uh, many of the decision-making uh, actions here. Uh, because uh, the organizations are remunerated through CMS, it has to be well documented, uh, which is to say it has to demonstrate that uh, the dialysis service was, was given uh, and validated appropriately so that uh, CMS can pay uh, the provider back. So, so it's laden with an awful lot of paperwork that tends to fall to the patient and caregivers. Uh, and so uh, part of the conversation that Alan and I have, have been having, uh, particularly with his team, is, is really to, to find a way to, uh, to, to sort of simplify that process using blockchain. So this is sort of a classic uh, disintermediation kind of issue. Um, and then going forward, the, the idea would be to sort of roll in uh, distributed identity management to make it easier to access uh, patient uh, patient data as it relates to to their dialysis, uh, but certainly beyond that going forward. So this is you know so so I'm I'm very very excited that uh, Alan uh, was able to make a contribution uh, to this uh, um, to this um, competition. Uh, this is really I think the tip of the iceberg um, going forward. Uh, again, and Alan has said this. I'm very passionate about this. This is a personal thing for me. Uh, and it just so happens that I live in Seattle, which I've said this before, but Seattle is where dialysis was invented back in 1960. Uh, so it's sort of the center of kidney care. Um, and so there's an awful lot of resources available to us here. Uh, I was just on a call yesterday with our CMO with Northwest Kidney Centers, uh, which happens to be the third largest not-for-profit dialysis provider in the U.S. And, and so we have such great resources available here, and I just don't want to—I don't want to squander them. And so, um, so we're going to try, uh, Alan and I, and anyone else who's interested, we're going to try to con sort of continue the conversation in the kidney care space, looking at ways to um, incorporate blockchain technologies into making it easier. Uh, from either a patient-centric perspective to make it easier to take sort of the burden off the patient for, for some of the work that they have to do, um, or to look at the sort of the workflow for remuneration to make it easier for providers uh, to work better with CMS for, for payment. So yeah, really, really great conversation. Thank you again, Alan, uh, for the participation uh, that, that you were able to give you and your team uh, at CVS uh, Health. Uh, it was very, very meaningful. So thanks. Yeah, pleasure. Looking forward to another one. <laughs> yeah, me too. I'll keep my eyes open. Okay, um, so uh, so we've only got just just about twelve minutes left. Uh, we're finally getting into some new business, and so uh, a couple of comments uh, uh, quickly here. Uh, we do have uh, we're on the hook uh, for a quarterly report, and so uh, there was a sort of a downtime as we transitioned at the end of last year. Uh, sort of, we did a bit of a restructuring within the hyperledger organization. Uh, so if you, it, those of you that have been around long enough uh, for a while, we were a working group and then we transitioned to a SIG. 
so part of that meant that uh, we don't necessarily do reports uh, to the technical steering committee anymore, but we do do reports to Hyperledger leadership. It's a, it's a, a different community team. Uh, all told, we will be doing a quarter, quarterly report, which is due uh, this time next month. Uh, I was able to sort of uh, petition to push it out at least a month. Um, and so anyone that happens to be a, 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 either a subgroup or a team lead, uh, I'll be working with you directly. I'm just really looking for a, a kind of a one paragraph summary on the work that you've done with, within your uh, either team or subgroup uh, as a lead. Uh, just a kind of status on the work that you've uh, sort of done to date, uh, where you see value, where you see uh, 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 difficulty uh, or challenges uh, over the past, technically it's a past quarter, which is since beginning of the year, but uh, since we didn't do a report the last quarter of last year, I'm going to suggest that, you know, you look, you do, your look back is a six-month look back. Um, uh, so I'll, I'll be looping back around to anyone in, in these lead positions because uh, that's that's going to be uh, sort of on your plate. And so I'll be working with you to, to get that squared away. Uh, but that's coming up at mid-month next month. So it's just in time for, for taxes for those of us in the U.S. here. Okay. So this is a bit that I really wanted to get to. Uh, so I, I'm hoping maybe the last uh, maybe 10 minutes or so we can sort of focus on this a little bit because I, I find this to be very interesting. Uh, so we did our annual survey uh, that happened at the end of last year and early this year. Uh, results are, are back. Uh, this is just a summary, and so feel free to go to the, uh, the survey itself because it's, it's a lot more in-depth. Uh, and it's, This is the full survey, and so you can parse this as appropriate. Uh, but I'm just going to hit the sort of summary on this. Uh, so in, in general, we have three sort of top tier industries, healthcare, of course, being the first. Uh, I think that's probably uh, no surprise since we're, we tend to be very healthcare focused. Uh, and then the other two are technology and consulting. And again, probably no big takeaway from that as well. Uh, I think this is probably about what we were expecting. Uh, within that sort of spectrum, uh, software development and informaticists are probably the uh, sort of the top uh, area of where interest is in. Uh, and then the development in smart contracts, and then as an entrepreneur are sort of what what the survey suggests uh, are where the uh, where most of the work is being done. I, I'm not entirely convinced of that. That seems uh, seems a little bit biased. Uh, I'm I'm not convinced that we're all software developers. Uh, I don't think that's true, but that's that's what the data is suggesting to us. Um, so the reason why we get together uh, is for primarily education and then uh, business and then social networking in that order. Uh, I would agree with that. Uh, and just, just for sort of as, as a side, I also, uh, I also run uh, the uh, Seattle um, Hyperledger Meetup, which is uh, here in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, it's the, the largest framework uh, meetup, uh, blockchain framework meetup, not necessarily healthcare specific. Uh, here in the Pacific Northwest, and so some of these results are very much shadowing some of the, real, the results that we've seen in our, our more local uh, surveys. Um, so uh, to that point, so education uh, in, in that meetup group as well as here in the SIG uh, are, are both top tier, meaning uh, many of us are still trying to learn more about what blockchain technologies are all about. Uh, and Hyperledger particularly as well. And so uh, no surprise there that, that education is top. Uh, so from that perspective, we'll continue to find ways to make education a component here. Uh, in fact, uh, we're gonna try to get a little bit more in the way of speakers to come uh, uh, guest speak here uh, within our general meetings. Uh, I just had a conversation at the beginning of this week with a gentleman who leads the healthcare group at Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft for me is not too far from here, and so uh, it's it's uh, very appropriate. So he's going to be coming to speak uh, at uh, an upcoming general meeting as a result, uh, and again for the sake of education. Um, so we we sort of have sort of this nice distribution of uh, long term involvement in blockchain technologies: three to five years, about a third of the population; one to three years, about a third of the population; and then less than one year, about a third of the population. So it's a very even distribution. Again, no surprise. Um, I'm a little surprised that we've had, we have so many people that have been involved for such a long period of time. That, that is a little bit interesting. Um, and then so we would sort of walk down uh, the rest of the, 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 the uh, summary here. Uh, really nothing surprising. Most people are interested in fabric and sawtooth. Those are the top 
uh, framework tools, uh, and Indie sort of the, the kind of a distant third. Uh, and then Composer, Explorer, and Cello are, are the top three tools that are, are probably most interesting uh, to most of us here. Uh, that's part and parcel of the fact that Fabric still tends to be, you know, the big, the bigger draw as far as blockchain uh, framework choices go. Uh, and of course, you know, most people know that Composer uh, is is technically gone sideways, uh, but it still tends to be very, very tightly wedded with Fabric development still. Uh, clinical data exchange, public health data exchange, and PII are the top ranked technology segments within membership uh, for, for us to, to look at going forward. Um, so I would argue clinical data exchange and even public health data exchange uh, are probably what I would sort of lump together as interoperability. Uh, I could be wrong in that ass assessment. I was surprised that PII uh, became uh, sort of uh, sort of a third uh, uh, element there, uh, highly ranked. Uh, I'll have to sort of think a little bit about how we might be able to inter integrate uh, PII into uh, more of our conversations or maybe even some of our subgroups uh, going forward, maybe even a new subgroup that focuses around PII. Um, it seems very, very narrow, uh, narrowly scoped. Uh, and again, I'm a little, little surprised that that was uh, so highly ranked. Uh, but we'll try to, we'll try to respond to that. Um, and then, as far as far as the technology segments uh, where we want to uh, sort of work within the, the blockchain community, uh, smart contracts number one, self-sovereign identity, and then decentralized applications are the sort of the top three ranked. Uh, absolutely the case that smart contracts make sense. Uh, true also for um, self-sovereign identity or SSI. Uh, those are probably the big players uh, that I, I imagine that we'll be uh, looking at going forward, particularly SSI. Uh, I think, uh, and this is my own sort of take on things, I think uh, identity management in healthcare is going to be so, sort of a primary driver going forward. And if, if we look at our frameworks, uh, Right now, Indy is sort of a distant third between behind Fabric and Sawtooth. And I, might, I will speculate going forward that Indy becomes maybe, if not top, uh, a challenge for Fabric within the healthcare space as the healthcare community uh, sort of matures their understanding of blockchain technologies to, to include not only DLT, which is what Fabric is all about, but to include Indy, Indy which is more uh, SSI or self sovereign identity, which is really allowing endpoints to manage their data. And, and when I say endpoints, that's really patient, probably uh, number one, uh, provider and payer, sort of the other, the other two components of that, of that you know, triumvirate. Uh, but, but really that's, for me going forward, SSI I think is gonna be very, very interesting uh, and quick to develop. Uh, and then uh, just uh, as far as mechanics go, email and telecons tend to be the, the most preferred means for communication. So we'll continue to do what we're doing here. Uh, and then semi-weekly telecons were, were by far sort of the, the top uh, request. Uh, so we're gonna keep that as we've been doing going forward as well. So any, any thoughts or comments on this? And again, I, I really, if you haven't had a chance, I'd really, I'd, it'd be great if you could parse the full, res, the, the full resource uh, available to you in the, uh, uh, in the survey, because uh, there's a lot more data to be had there. But uh, I'd, I'd love to hear your feedback on that. Uh, and, uh, and I mean, this is really helping, helping me, helping us to sort of set the stage for the work that we do in this coming year. Any thoughts or comments? Okay, uh, so uh, again, if, if you were a part participant, thanks so much for participating. Uh, this is a really important survey for us. Uh, and again, like I said, the value to that is it, it really helps to set, set sort of the cadence and direction for our, our velocity going forward for this year. And uh, we'll continue to, to sort of use the value that we have going forward uh, to help set, set our, set our uh, expectations for the full membership group. Okay, with just a couple minutes left, uh, and again, this is something that got sort of pushed to the bottom of the pile last time, so uh, we may have to do that again. But uh, a handful of us did participate in the HIMSS conference uh, this past uh, month. Uh, and uh, two things that really came out of that, uh, that discussion um, uh, or participation uh, was the fact that so many people came up to us and asked, where are your use cases? Um, and honestly, uh, we, we don't 
to date, uh, the SIG really doesn't think in terms of use cases, and perhaps, perhaps I think we want to probably maybe formalize that. Uh, so uh, what I'm going to recommend, and again, we're 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 just coming up to the top of the hour. We'll we'll have to push this till next next uh, next time we meet. Uh, what I'm going to recommend that we have a good conversation about the value of use, of documenting use cases uh, for public access within the uh, the hyperledger community. And then the other the other sort of takeaway that that we we picked up was that we had an awful lot of people with interest in blockchain governance which is really how do you manage a blockchain solution once you've decided to implement it, which if you can imagine is part of the discussion up front when you're looking to see the, what the value of a blockchain solution is. Uh, and it includes DevOps, it includes sort of long-term management of, of a technology solution. And so people were asking, well, once I implement this thing, how does this get managed long-term? Which is very insightful uh, and suggests that people are starting to consider blockchain technologies a little bit more rigorously, which I'm thrilled about, but we need to have a good conversation and a good discussion around how to make that happen. So those are the two things that we'll put uh, for next month. Uh, and we are up at the top of the hour, so we'll have to close things out. Um, so thanks everyone for, for, for participating. Uh, and uh, I expect, uh, I'll, I'll send out notes uh, and courtesy of, of Wendy. So thanks for Wendy for that. Uh, that'll go out sometime today, and then, of course, we'll be meeting again uh, in two weeks, which is March 22nd, same time, same location, same telecom. Uh, any final comments before we, we close out? All righty. Well, have a fantastic weekend. Thanks, everyone. You too. Thanks. Thank you. Right. Have a good one. Thank you. Thank you.